Here we go. All right. Looks like you were slamming some wine there, Michael. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's evening already. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's making me jealous here. Oh, got a long ways to go to get to wine time here. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so with that preamble out of the way, and we're recording. Um, uh, Rob, do you want to take things away? Maybe share your screen and go over where we're at. Yeah, I link to the specific uh, comment in that discussion, um, where I have the proposal that I was talking about in the last working group. And yeah, so I think there's a uh, there's a few um, angles to go at this. Uh, there's the new behavior where we merge all the defers on the same level. Um, there is the uh, the pending with the path, so you know that you know the locations where a defer or a stream is in the works, and that you can use to know that if basically something will be in mind. If you're if you're expecting a defer and you did not get one of these <laughs> pending, then you'll know that it was in mind. Um, just because why not? I also said, we'll add this completed true for a stream. So now we can know when an individual stream ends, that seems pretty straightforward. Uh, I, I have a bunch of examples, uh, maybe we won't go through them in detail right now, but they're there for everyone to look at. Um, but the, uh, the open question that we ended with at the last meeting is, um, how are fields merged that are part of both a deferred and non-deferred selection set? So that's this example here. Um, you have almost the same fields inside of here and inside there. All like the top level ones, objects are the same. Uh, but basically, F2, C, F, J is the only um, leaf field that's in the defer that's not outside. So we said that it would be desirable for these two to be equivalent, where the stuff that's in the de in the defer uh, gets merged into the non-deferred selection set. And um, we're talking about how uh, how to implement that, and that's where I think that's why we didn't just immediately go for it because there's questions of how it should be implemented. And there's some edge cases that I think we need to figure out too. Um, yes. We, yeah, yeah. So, oh, go ahead, Mike. Reg regarding this, um, we, that, that was where we left off in the uh, working group discussions. So if anybody not was not there, that's essentially where we branched off. Um, and uh, I, in the meantime, implemented that in hot chocolate and um, but we do essentially a pre-traversal so we compile essentially the query and anyway simplify it and uh, that's where it's easy but the problem is and that's where I had to with Ivan a discussion on <clears throat> um, or where in the working group is to do that with the collect fields algorithm what we could do is like hold off the defer and then see that we get to the second query. So essentially merge it line by line and then at the end send it off. But this is not as efficient because you could have the branch off much earlier. Um, the other way is, and that, um, that we accept that uh, the base specification maybe is not as efficient in merging these. Yeah. And and has um, one reason why I think that this is pretty desirable is because um, it does simplify a lot with the responses where for if you look at this example, um, we have this uh, top level object that has a defer underneath it with the leaf field. And then we have another defer that has that same object inside of it with a different leaf field inside of yet a third defer. and if they do all get merged together, it's basically equivalent to this. And now you, uh, these defers, because they're under the same object, should get merged and you get one neat response with a path that points to inside nested object and you get these two fields back. If you don't, and you instead like fork and execute them separately, 
you would end up with two uh, paths that point to the same place with different objects on them. And I think that you would you would still be able to know that two of them are coming because you would get two pendings with that same path. But now it's kind of you have to like count how many pendings came in with that same path and then know that all of them came back. But also the way that Yvonne described it had me think of it a little bit differently. And I think that maybe like an entirely different approach could work. I'm not, I'm not sure if it would work. Uh, Yakov ha also has a um, implementation. Um, yeah, I, I'll I'll read through what Yvonne wrote, but but I was I was thinking that like everything still would get merged together, but you would keep track of each field node of which defer it belongs to, and as you go down, you would kind of send the results to the different deferred objects. Um, yeah, Yvonne, do you want to walk through what you just posted, maybe? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, yes, so. As we discussed last time, and Michael actually make me to to write it line by line, just just to be sure like it's possible with deep deep nesting. So idea is um, as an input collect fields right now receive one set of selection set. So you just pass like initially you pass entire query like selections array of with selection set of entire query, and as a result you get like um, uh, collected fields uh, with defer like even previous proposal you get the same input but you receive like two two different outputs field. Uh, fields to execute like right now in fields to defer. Uh, what I'm basically propose is to change, uh, make function more complicated in a <laughs> sense. Yeah, uh, but it's possible to do without query planning. It's possible uh, to do it iteratively. So it's accept two sets of fields uh, like, all the fields uh, that we currently uh, that we want to grab sub fields from, and also set of fields that from other differ from that like so basically when when we go through query, we track and not only fields that we currently executing. But we also track in which of those fields uh, originated from under defer. And when we when collect fields do a job, instead of just returning you like two field two things, uh, collected fields and fields to be deferred, it, now it returned like three things. It's returned you fields that needs to be executed fields that needs to be deferred and fields that is executed but was under defer. Uh, I'm have like problem with naming. Uh, so I wanted to have something concrete to show here or like for people uh, to comment asynchronously. So I just put it there and I use most complex example from, from uh, Rob post uh, so um, if, if you find a problem with it uh, may, maybe I missed something but it's look like it should work uh, without query planning so you can also do it simpler so the uh, so the thing where I also talked a bit out with Benji and, and exchange idea on that over the holidays was that ideally the, the, the complexity of the collect fields wouldn't or the, the, the algorithm wouldn't 
change that dramatically because it's a very central and very complex tool. Like a lot of graph engines, uh, when you implement it, it's one of the complex uh, things to do. So the, you could even do it without query planning. If you, so there, there are two things we, we could do. We could accept that we get inefficient things with the core algorithm. And that we, in some cases, don't figure out the best optimal query. And then um, we essentially send duplicated data down. But we have a note that you could do that, for instance, with, with, with a pre-traversal of the queries or something like that, if you want to implement that. And then um, basically, we can get away with a very simple algorithms for the spec. But, other, but uh, more advanced graphical engines can then implement these things. Uh, in a better way. Uh, the second thing is we can really hold off on the defer and uh, carry it down until uh, we know, okay, we have all overlaps tracked and then we spawn it off. And then we also can keep essentially mainly the, the, the current algorithm. You mentioned earlier, Michael, that the one of the risks of um of doing the defers later is that there's yes. that effect effectively this like potential delay this efficiency delay yes. but i actually think that that's potentially desired if you imagine for example that you are running the graphql query in a transaction in the database to ensure consistency then when you have those deferred deferred fields you wouldn't necessarily want to start selecting those things first because other things need to be selected first. You don't actually want to kick off that action in a transaction, for example. And I think that might not be the only case. If the processing of the selection sets or, I don't know, the processing of the data itself is expensive, you might be able to get that first payload faster to the client if you don't kick off any additional asynchronous work until all, this, all the original non-deferred stuff has been fully done. So I think actually starting it later is more in line with what defer aims to, to set out. So I, I think deferring later is better. And could, could, thinking, of, could be. well, thinking about could, that deeper. Yeah, go on, I'll, I'll interject later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Um, thinking about that a little deeper, um, and also combining that with the fact that we're considering getting rid of labels and with, that we're not trying to express kind of like the identity of these things anymore. It's more just about the path again, like it was kind of originally. Um, I'm actually wondering whether a query like the one that I wrote previously, the, the F2 with the A, B, C, D, E, F, et cetera, um, is actually more equivalent to actually turning into multiple defers, where each individual defer is just a very small selection set. Um, so I've posted a new comment to the bottom. I posted a new comment to the bottom of um, that message thread right down there. Um, now this is weird, right? So it's a, it's a bit out of left field because it's taking that one defer and turning it into three, but it is now much more straightforward to understand what's going on. And we can, from the server side, we can express there is a promise here at this path, this path isn't complete, and same for these other two paths that are deeper down. Um, and part of the reason that I'm thinking about things like this is I'm quite interested to see how we might also be able to use this mechanism to implement live queries. So with live queries, we might want to be able to do patching at arbitrary locations in the GraphQL response tree. Um, and so I think that this would actually tie in quite nicely with that, though, of course, it's out of scope. So and the thing is, if you have something like this, it could be that your server DDoS is himself uh, or itself, uh, if, if it's not done properly, right? Because you suddenly transfer one differ and then Maybe you have that in the list and so on. And then you're um, creating a lot more defers and, and actually create this multiplier that we want to get rid of. But uh, apart from that, 
Um, so in the beginning, the first iteration that we did is actually hold off on the deferred on the deferred task. And um, that actually leads to not so nice performance characteristic. And the, a lot of feedback we got from the community is that the people essentially want to have the deferred as early as possible, um, because then you get the overall data much faster. So, not not yeah. saying that 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 uh, that um, one or the other thing is wrong. That's just the feedback that we got from the first from, from the iterations that we did uh, on defer and releasing uh, hot chocolate builds to the community. So the the community is with the performance of the current implementation where we spawn off essentially really quickly, much more happy than with the first iterations where we spawned off almost at the end of the the request and um i don't know if I, it's yeah go ahead yeah i i do think there's so i think that there would definitely be a conceptual mismatch if we ended up splitting a single defer into multiple tiny defers and in practice i think most I could be wrong about this, but I think most servers can do like, given that you have already calculated the values of A, C, D, F, H, I, uh, the cost of re-including them in the deferred payload versus the cost of calculating upfront what is going to be in the deferred payload uh, seems, it seems like recalculating the value, like recalculating the value is just a cache lookup. Whereas like figuring out which specific field has not yet been deferred and only in like doing a diff algorithm. Uh, like I know at least with Relay, for instance, we had to stop doing uh, query diff algorithms because the cost of that versus, uh, admittedly this is client side, not server side, but the cost of like trying to compute what the difference was between the data that we had already received uh, was much larger than just asking for all the data all over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so what we ended up doing, like, like, so, so how this is easy to implement is actually two traverses about the query tree. Um, and then you can compute it and the server actually can cache that um, simplified query. So essentially we just rewrite the query and then we get a simpler out. That's what, um, it's not even a query plan. It's just rewriting the query. So we are stripping the defers and stuff like that and rewriting it actually into a simpler query and then this is easy to implement, but I, I think in essence, or Benji more or less convinced me is we don't have to figure out the most efficient algorithm for the spec that fixes all our edge cases, because that is up to the server implementers. We just have to find a reasonable algorithm and um, then add nodes. You can make that more efficient if you choose to. Yeah, I, I think that if we, if we have the algorithm we, and we can do the two pass or whatever, we could like offer as tooling on the client, hey, this is a way the results will be functionally equivalent if you like do an optimization pass before sending this query to the server. Um, but yeah, I'd much prefer on a personal level, I think it would be better for the server response to be as deterministic as possible to the client uh, versus as optimized as possible. Um, to, to go back to, to this example, splitting up the defers, I feel like if you're um, 
if, if I was writing a query like this, I, it would be because I have a component that wants to render all these fields and that's what's deferred. And then if it does get split up into multiple, I would have to, maybe it could be handled by like the client library, but you would at least have some logic that has to know to not start rendering this stuff until all of these defers came back. Yeah, I I think that that's the exact use case that I would expect as well. Which yeah, that's actually that's a critical thorn in the side of this approach because if you imagine adding um, uh, Matt's type name hack to this, then it would just come through in that first defer, and those second and third defers wouldn't come through at the same time. So yeah, okay, that's good enough to out, to rule it out for me. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Yeah, um, I, I have a like a few other um, examples that are that I think that maybe we should just talk through and see like what we would expect to happen. Um, so, in this example, if without without these defers, it would all uh, you would return nested object, deeper object, a, b, c, d. Um, each of these defers are under a, a different object, so they all have a, a different path. And so if we did do that, that type of merging, um, would we expect that like this defer that's under here, B isn't included in here because it was sent not in the initial payload, but in like a previously deferred payload. And then you also get into issues with I guess ordering. Like in the rest of GraphQL, uh, inline fragments and fragments are not affecting, uh, not affecting like um, no nope. payload. So in this case, like what? However, you would arrange like fragment, you will receive the same response. And I, I believe it's the same here. Uh, more, moreover, like uh, since we're now discussing merging, basically nothing prevents us to all defer on the fields itself. Maybe it's it's not critical. I'm not saying like we should all defer on the fields, but basically like since we're merging, everything we can do different fields uh, without like selection set. So I, I think optimized version of that, it should be like everything squashed and stuff that was requested synchronously return like synchronously, stuff that requested deferred, no matter on which level and how Deep there, uh, they should be returned in deferred payload. But uh, but the ordering problem, Ivan, doesn't exist. Uh, Rob doesn't exist here because you have the first defer here, uh, which is over nested, right? And mm -hmm. we we discussed uh, something uh, a couple of meetings back where we said that an inner defer cannot overtake the outer defer. So the B would already be there. We could strike it off all the other defers. And also the A is already there. So we could strike it, right? And right. Then, then we're talking about C, which could, uh, uh, which should go further, but now we are in the same selection set. Um, but uh, there should, if it's a nested defer, it should still be guaranteed that it cannot overtake its outer defer. I mean, that's a, that's a guarantee we discussed. So if there is an inner defer, so a defer spawned from a defer, then it cannot overtake the outer defer. And with that, you don't have an ordering problem. All right, yes. Um, next, next example, hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good. <laughs> are we um 
um, are we tabling for now? Oh, hi, everybody. Are we tabling for now uh, Ivan's point about um, allowing defer on fields? I think I, I don't yeah, know if I, I raised that. that. Let, let's yeah. not do that for now. Uh, I, yeah, it's a big so, one. So, yeah. And also, I want, I want this feature to go through. And if we add more and more things, we will never end with this story. Let's get the version that we have now and make it work. And then we can, in, in further iterations, we can always discuss it because it's adding something to the defer directing, allowing it in most places. We can add that later. Yeah, my point was not to allow it, but like a mental model that in actually like in line fragments, there is like just a group uh, fields under defer. Like in mental model, it shouldn't matter if it's like we have like every field in separate in one fragment with D4 or the grouped the results should be the same. Yeah, we we don't one. allow both stream and not stream. Um, Yeah, so I guess the one of the weird things here is like stream we've established, we like know how to do the path always because it ends up at a field. Like we could, if we wanted to reduce the scope of the proposal, I know that this again throws a huge wrench into it, but actually only allowing defer on fields reduces the scope substantially because we always have that anchor of the path. We always, like the algorithm for merging, we know. Um, and then in the future, we could expand it to, we allow defer on response keys, right? The, the big problem we're seeing here, like the reason why this is such a gnarly like the field merging under defers is a gnarly thing for us to resolve is because spreads are not response keys so one spread does not have one anchor and we're purposefully trying to reduce duplication because that's how spreads work elsewhere and it's like we're trying to reduce surprise, right? We're trying to reduce developer surprise. If spreads naturally reduce duplication, then why wouldn't they under a defer? But also we expect the payload to have everything that under that spread, like if the spread is fulfilled, then we expect the payload to have everything under that spread. So why wouldn't we expect all of the fields to be available for that defer? And like, I don't know how to resolve that tension. Like it is two different mental models of how GraphQL is supposed to work that are in direct tension with each other. And I don't know how that is actually resolvable. So you're saying um, in this case, A is not inside defer, A is also inside defer, that's a validation error. Um, so we like, we could implement it like that. That's one potential. Um, I'm saying like the mental model for what you expect as a developer is like there are two valid mental models here. One is, oh, fragment spreads always merge. So because A is outside of the defer, I expect the inner A to just merge with it. And the other mental model is defer or fragment spreads, when a spread is in fact fulfilled, when it's on the correct type, all the shape of that fragment spread is guaranteed to be in the response. Therefore, I've deferred this inner A and all the things below it. So I expect the response shape coming out of that defer to be to look exactly like what I've written in my GraphQL. It's not. Uh, it's actually a good point, man. Because the if if we 
disallowed defer on fragments and only allow it on, on fields. You could basically do the same thing because we have the field merging algorithm. So it essentially would work the same way like on fragments. So it, it wouldn't take anything away that we have now, but it would simplify the merging. The unfortunate thing is like the mental model as a product developer, the mental it's model, the, it yeah. like, it's a component. Can, yeah, it's component based. On the other hand, but we could pull it up in the server. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, I mean, you could, you could define it like this, and from an algorithmic standpoint, we could pull the fur to A. Yeah, and then and then in fact it would be a validation error because you both have A without a defer and an A with a defer, right? Yeah, but, uh, but oh that's yeah, and you 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 say that okay in this case you you would then say you have to have an alias there. Yeah, kind of. Um, but so. but then we don't we don't get rid of so the the, the idea is uh, or what we are trying to solve here is to not send too much data down to the cloud, to duplicate too much data. Yeah, I, I don't know if the preventing data duplication is like, I don't, I know that we have to make a choice explicitly of do we, prevent data duplication, basically, do we do duplicate data? Or do we have a like clear response, a very predictable response model? Um, yeah, that, so that's a, a, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so like out of two, to like mental models you suggest. I personally think the first one, when when everything is merged and the response shape is, response shape obvious only after merging is correct one. Like for me, if I mentally replace defer with skip and set like a flag to, fall, uh, to true, so I uh, replace uh, defer with skip and set like query variable to true. You would get everything like A, B, C, D, uh, you would get it. So like initial response should get everything which is, uh, which is not under defer. And second thing like data duplication and for me, it's like why stuff should be uh, duplicated. Like libraries, like if you do this, this kind of situation will will price if you have like a fragment based frameworks. And if you have fragment based frameworks, like they can can do predictable shape for every fragment. Uh, they will do it anyway. It, it's possible. Like you get A, B, C, D in the first response, and you will get rest uh, only like default E and F uh, and H, uh, like uh, deferred. And when when they deferred, like framework can look and understand like inside the same fragment that also was asked for stuff that is from an initial payload, took it from initial payload and like pass it to component. I, I don't see like a problem uh, just sticking with first mental model. There's, there's not a super strong problem. It is for not for Clients that don't have a store but do are fragment based. Um, there you is. They can have temporary temporary store. Kind like, of can. The like, if I were implementing this just na naively, the way I would do it is 
like my fragment model points to a JSON object. And then if my fragment is deferred, I just like point to the JSON object that we get in the defer response. And I don't do any merging. Like that's that's the most naive way of operating a client. So that's what I would expect like a product developer who has no actual client and is like custom building like their components based off of what's actually coming down the network. But like, I think that this is the clear tension and is why maybe as is defer on fragments may just be like, it, 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 yeah, I, it, the composition of defer with fragments is hard. I don't know. I mean, how, how crazy is it to actually have that validation rule where you can't have a field that's both deferred and not deferred? Um, yeah. It means that you have to write, write a bunch of aliases. It, you have, you either have to consciously say, I'm okay with duplicated data and write a bunch of aliases until yeah, at least that, um, fragment aliases that, come around. Yeah, yeah but, but, but there, there is still, I think the merging of this actually makes it more like the efficiency gains that we get by merging these is something that we shouldn't throw throw away for for me we don't have to get everything in edge case it's more like a best effort we try to to, to merge it if we if we send a bit more data uh, down in this implementation or that doesn't actually matter like you always have a transport layer like uh, in the client application and there you have to aggregate this stuff in the end yeah uh well just just to talk to this example um yakov had posted this in discord uh, what's interesting about it is that um you have this defer which is nested under oh. its path would be a b and this one whose path would just be um the the root and um so it i think this one actually does depend on the order because if this ef is coming first then it all of this could be removed from here and but if um if this one is coming first then you definitely can't remove this because a client is going to expect these fields to be there and i don't think it would depend on your data of which one comes first so it's like it can't be like statically analyzed i think yeah maybe we i mean we don't have to guarantee that to the client that we never send duplicated data but uh we, we try to make it as efficient as possible so it's a best effort approach like not to like the, the counter example is that I showed where we send tons of duplicated data down and then you have a problem otherwise. And Thanks. these the, in these cases we actually can get rid of. Yeah, so I think there's a difference between trying to reduce the number of deferred responses and yeah. trying to reduce duplicated data. And I I think the reducing the number of deferred responses makes sense. If in this case, you could either end up having two defers or just one or zero, in fact, right? Depending on what the server decided was most efficient. And defer should be like the defer spec needs to be expressive enough that a client knows which case they're in, in any of those situations, right? But if the response if the like deferred response so say there are three defers that happen there's in my mind like the spec is actually the spec is not a network protocol even though we talk in json 
and we say, oh, if you're using JSON, this is how it should end up looking. We like the spec itself explicitly says, yeah, you can do all kinds between what the server algorithm is and what the access pattern is. You can do whatever optimizations you want, right? So you could have a protocol in between there that reduces all the duplication and then reassembles it on the other side. But when I'm accessing the object that has been deferred, I expect all of the fields underneath my defer to be available on that object. How it gets there, like we could have GraphQL over HTTP, for instance, like reassemble it for us, that would be a reasonable thing. But in the spec itself, the like value that I access when I hit that object within the deferred response needs to contain everything that I've, uh, that I've asked for. I don't agree with that exactly as stated. Um, or at least I may not 100% be following you. Um, but if you think of it in terms of just the basic JSON that the spec describes, I think what you're saying is that JSON that is the deferred thing should have all of that stuff in. And if you want to do a network optimization and throw it out, then sure, you do that. But from a, from a spec point of view, that JSON object has everything. I don't think that's really the case and i sorry i don't think we should be pushing for that um i think we should see the incremental deliveries other than the root level one which is like ivan described with all the skips instead of defers like yep these have all been skipped here's the rest of the stuff everything above that i think is a patch so i wouldn't expect you to be able to use that patch on its own i would only expect you to see take that patch take the path smush it in where it's meant to be and then use that, the result of that patching in your client application. I think that is what we should be shooting for rather than what I think you were describing that. Yeah, so so then the tension is, is def at defer patching or is it a like access model? Mm, for, for me, it's patching and it, it also always was patching for me like clients sm smart client libraries can make it access model if they want but from from like if we like programmer usability issue and programmer mental models should be handled if, if if they can handle can be handled in code generation or client libraries they should be handled there and libraries should have a freedom to innovate so some libraries can choose to do it like uh, expose it as a div some as a as a like full blob so you ask for for this fragment, you get all the data from this fragment after everything is different. Like in some cases, maybe like you get like two stages, part, partial data and like uh, stuff on top. It's depend on the library. So, but objectively, like duplicating data is a problem. And like, I'm agree with Benji on what actually like I always assume it was about like deltas sending like gifs but happy to hear if somebody thought otherwise I think that is reasonable we just need to be clear that that is the that patching is in fact the mental model which if if patching is a mental model, I think that this you and Benji that makes both your points make total sense. Can we uh, can we rename incremental into 
patches or something. It will make it super clear in that case. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did we should probably touch on Yakov your comment in chat because that's definitely an option that we should discuss. Yeah. Um, I, I think I, I hope uh, I'm taking Michael's point and, and running with it, and that I don't think we have to solve all the edge cases. Um, I think you know to get this moving, we can just pick which model. I mean, like like a lot of people have been saying that we're going with, and I, I've. I've always assumed that we're going with the, uh, or not always. I mean, in this iteration, of, I'm assuming that we're going with that patch model. And I think we can we can even specify the algorithm without any deduplication. We don't have to take it that far, but you know, favoring simplicity, like Michael was saying, and uh, and and, and then uh, maybe iterating from there. I've been working on an algorithm that does deduplicate completely, and it quickly gets complex. And so far, it's not quite even working. So um, I'm not sure that, uh, you know, I'm not sure that, you know, uh, in the time frame that we want to release this, we'll get it, you know, but uh, we, we, we might, but it, maybe it pays to just, you know, say that we can add, um, you know, uh, that, that, that uh, servers are encouraged to um, deduplicate as much as possible and just iterate on our algorithm um, once, you know, as we go. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's yeah. very much what I've been. I think we should. We don't because if, if if we try to fix all the edge cases, we never get to the point that we're happy with it. <laughs> um, yeah. So just just to go back to to this example, um, this one, um, like if the if the server is is like pretty naive if this algorithm is naive and you you do end up just executing this then separately executing this then executing these defers all on their own um is it okay that you get back basically two uh payloads with the same path I mean, I, I personally think that clients should expect to be able to merge anything that makes sense. I mean, uh, it, whatever path, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, whatever path they get, they should be able to uh, merge it and they should just expect uh, that things should be complete um, at, that, at that path now that we've discussed merging. So there could be extra payloads, I suppose, um, or even, you know, empty payloads, but... Um, but a path should be, and now that we've said that we're merging, the, the path should be complete. Uh, uh, meaning everything should be ready once an individual path has been sent. There's, there's a, there, but there is a good interjection from Matt. So basically an algorithm that always deduplicates everything is still stack compliant. And I think that should be true. But our algorithm should tackle most of the issues. But uh, for the client, the client should expect that data can be deduplicated. Sorry, Ben. In the, no worries. In the proposal that I placed, I don't know, three, three or four weeks ago, whenever it was, with the IDs, you may recall, um, in that I had imagined that there would be multiple hits for the same path, like you've modeled here, Rob. Um, so they just got different IDs. That way, when you had the pending, you would say there's a pending thing at this path and there's two pending things at this path. And then you could resolve them individually without them affecting each other effectively and without you having to uh, have any confusion because the same path has come through twice. Um, and that would also allow you to do like the implicit completeness because at the moment in what you have here you've said that this path is pending you've not got anything that says that path is complete you have sent through some data for that path which might implicitly mark it as complete or it might not um, and then you've got some more data come through for it which is 
either unexpected or not. So I think you either need to at some point later have like a this path is now complete or you need to do something like I did where you actually give them individual IDs that you can close off and uh, write to individually, which honestly, I think we should bring back. I think it was uh, quite nice. Yeah, e either IDs. Um, what I do have here is that um, there's two pendings with the same path, so you have to expect two, two uh, incremental my responses. My apologies, with it. I yeah. skipped over that with my eyes. Yeah, good spot. I have a question. Like, I think there is two issues here. Like, one is what is the ideal result, and second one is like what technical limitation prevent us from ideal result and what compromise we want to do to resolve it. So like, and we're discussing them in parallel. So I'm kind of confused. What is ideal result in first place? And do we agree on that? So like for me, ideal result is like on, on a level, you get only two things. You have initial response uh, where like server can unwind everything, but at least server provides like everything outside of defer. And second payload on this level where everything under defer is bunched into one, one entry inside the incremental. Is it like everybody agrees it's ideal result and we just discuss it, can we implement it or not? Or you have like alternative views on what, what the ideal result is? Like uh, for, for the current proposal that we see here? Or what do you mean? No, I, I mean like uh, currently we have like for me, it's non-ideal result because we have like uh, two paths. Uh, it's the same. Like for me, it should be like initial result plus one one entry inside the incremental per path. One in, uh, why why not multiple? Because then you can batch. Like like uh, no I no no. Like... Yeah, I, I I mean okay. like. Inside the incremental can have entries with different paths, but like yeah. everything related to single path should be like until this object is fully like everything on this level is deferred, you should wait, accumulate everything on this level and send it everything on this level is one one goal. So you effectively need to batch. Um, we, we uh, yeah, sorry to leave in a cliffhanger. <laughs> I know we're right in the middle of the discussion, uh, but we, we might have to end it there. Um, so do we, uh, maybe this is something we can take to the discussion thread. Um, do, do we have clear next steps? I guess there's more discussion to be had, it sounds like. Yeah, it's a, the way we have a couple of, so it's maybe, maybe we should. Yeah, we, we definitely should have weekly meetings. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> There's more to talk about for sure. Okay, um, uh, Benji, I'll be in touch with you and we'll figure out the getting the meeting set up from the foundation side of things. Um, and uh, yeah, we can definitely talk uh, async yeah. in uh, Discord or in the discussion thread as well um, and aim to touch base again next week. Thanks everyone. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm... yeah, yeah. Well, one quick thing I, I want to ask, um, especially from Europe, like we're discussing with edge cases and they have a bunch of examples. Can you can you like actually collect them somewhere? Uh, combination of stream and defer and examples that we discussed today, it would be great to have it. Yeah, I have, discussion I have right. a bunch of examples here. I'll add the other ones that we talked about today onto this yeah, comment. Yeah, yeah. ideal. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Thanks. All right. Uh, Rob, what were you going to say? It sounded like you were going to say something before that. Or I'm going to keep working on the implementation because I think that changing it uh, could at least make things better. Um, okay. 
but I but I haven't been able to spend enough time on it to like have like a clear idea of how it's going to shake out. Okay. Yeah, cool would be also. I mean, Yakov has also done some algorithmic work. Maybe he also pushes that in somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, my my initial work is is is, is uploaded, but it, it's not working. It breaks on a whole bunch of edge cases, so I'm not I'm not super confident that oh. it's actually the right direction. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but luckily, I think I'm pursuing a slightly different technique. So uh, than than Rob, so we were exploring like two different avenues, and maybe one of us will get it. Uh, so maybe Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, okay. We, we better end it, but uh, yeah, we'll all be in touch. Thanks very much, everyone. We'll talk again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.